When was the last time that you ever tried to set a good impression? Maybe it was an interview. Maybe it was a first date. Or maybe it was the first day of class. No matter what, you trying to set a good first impression is a matter of perception. Perception is strongly connected to our communication. In this video, we'll talk about the connection between perception and communication. We'll come to understand the stages of the perception process. We'll identify some differences that cause us to have different ways of perceiving things. And then we'll talk about a perceptual check, also known as perception checking. First, we need to think about perception and communication and how they interact. First, perception and communication is based on our experiences. We tend to see the world based on our preconceived notions of how the world should exist, mainly our experiences. For example, if you had a negative experience with a dog when you were a small child, then in your mind, every communication event that circles around a dog probably is going to have a negative tint for you. Perception gives meaning to our communication. We can't really communicate without perception because it influences how we communicate with others. If we perceive ourselves in a positive light, we'll probably communicate in a positive way. Again, if we perceive ourselves in a negative light, we'll probably communicate in a negative way or be less likely to communicate at all. So when we look at perception and the connection that it has with communication, it's really a complex phenomenon. The perception process can be broken down into three steps. These steps are selection of available data, organization of data into a usable form, and then interpretation, which simply means adding meaning. Now perception happens super, super quick, just like a snap of the finger. Think about it. What do you see here? Based on your perception, you may see one or two different things. You may see a person's head when wearing a jacket, so we're facing the back of them. They have a very long, maybe a parka, a coat, pants, and some shoes. Here's their hand. This will have a mitten on it. And they're looking into maybe a cave or some big hole here. Or maybe you see a face. Here's the eye. Here's the nose. Here's the mouth. Here's the jawline. An ear. The neck. And some hair. But based on your perception, maybe even the angle you were when you viewed this video can affect how you see this figure. It all starts off with selection. Selection is really just noticing something different in our environment with one of our five senses. So it may be your sense of smell. Maybe you smell cookies in your kitchen. Or maybe you can see some bright red ball in the distance. Now there are different factors that affect our selection. There can be selective exposure, selective attention, and selective retention. For selective exposure, it's the deliberate choice we make to experience or to avoid a particular stimuli. This can mean maybe you notice that bright red ball because it's new and exciting, but you avoid the gray, dull food. Because you're thinking, well, food should not be gray, so I'm not going to even notice that. Then there's selective attention. This is focusing on a specific message while ignoring or downplaying another stimuli. So maybe you notice a baby crying because you're a new mom. Or maybe you notice a call for help. Or a sneeze because that really loud sneeze happened right when cold season is about to happen and the last thing you want to happen is get sick. And then there's selective retention. This is when we process, store, and retrieve information that we've already selected, organized, and interpreted. But usually we only want to retrieve 
the pleasant things and tend to forget the negative things. We tend to remember the negative things if they were really impactful though. Then there's organization. Organization is all about how we try to fill in the blanks. So if, if we are noticing something, selecting something, our first thought after we select it is, well, what does this mean? One way we try to figure out what does this mean is by closure. For example, what do you see here? Maybe you see a cow? Or maybe you see an incomplete drawing. I've tried over and over again, but I cannot see the cow in this picture. But maybe you do. Maybe your brain goes ahead and closes the picture. The same way if you saw a circle with a small gap in it. Well, your brain would say, well, that's just a circle with a gap in it, not a really large C. Your brain can also try to organize through proximity. Proximity is based on when we try to group stimuli that's close to one another. So for example, there are times where I will stand very close to my friends so that people know that I'm not all by myself in a large crowd. Or there have been times even when I've been in a large crowd all by myself, I'll stand near people so that people don't realize that I'm by myself especially because sometimes it may be late at night and it may be very scary to be by myself. Then there's similarity. This is when we look at two things, or two or more things, and we say, based on their shape, their size, their color, or some type of trait, these two things must go together. For example, when my friend and I wear workout clothes and go out together, people know that we're friends, even if there's a large crowd around us because we're the only people wearing workout clothes, they can pick us out. So do you see the cow yet? Then there's interpretation. Our interpretation can be based on numerous factors. For example, our past experiences. So remember that dog example I gave? Well, that could affect how you see things. If you have a negative past experience of a dog, then every single time you see a dog, hear a dog, smell a dog even, your interpretation is going to be negatively affected. It can also be based on new experiences. Every competent communicator knows that a new situation brings something new to interpret. So we have to be able to leave our negative past experiences or even our positive experiences and truly evaluate this new situation. Others' opinions can affect our interpretation. There may be times where you've heard a rumor about someone, and immediately when you first met them, you thought, mm -mm, I don't want to be that person's friend. I've heard so much about them. But then you come to realize later on, they're nothing like what the rumor said. You let someone else's opinion of them affect your interpretation. And there's even verbal communication. For example, if you hear someone with an accent, you may think, wow, you must be from here. Or maybe if someone uses improper grammar, you think, wow, they must be very uneducated. Those may not even be true, but because you were influenced by the verbal communication, you interpret it in one way. So this concludes part one of perception and communication.